Hey guys, welcome to my video on profit maximization in a monopoly. We're going to talk about the monopolist decision when they have a single price to choose. And we're going to explain how to measure profit on a graph. So what we've done so far on the right is there was a perfectly competitive firm. And because it was perfectly competitive, its demand curve was perfectly elastic or horizontal. Demand was horizontal, which meant price was horizontal, which meant that marginal revenue was horizontal. And we at length described why the firm will increase production up until marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And that was the only choice that a perfectly competitive firm had. A monopolist, however, does not have a perfectly elastic demand curve because a monopolist is not one of many firms. A monopolist is the only firm that serves its market. And so the market demand curve is the monopolist demand curve. And so it will be downward sloping. You're going to see this graph a lot, some variation of this. Downward sloping demand curve, like in your supply and demand graph, and a marginal revenue curve that is below it. The marginal revenue curve is going to be below the price at every quantity, except for right up there at the intercept. The marginal revenue curve is going to be below the demand curve, which means that the price will be greater than the marginal revenue at every quantity. Um, specifically, these have the same intercept, but the marginal revenue curve has double the slope. So quick calculus side note. You don't have to know this in my class, but in some classes you do. So skip if you need. But the marginal revenue curve is always going to be twice as steep as demand whenever the demand curve is linear. How do we know that? Well, if your demand curve has this form, some intercept A minus a slope B times Q, B, minus, B equals A minus BQ, then total revenue, which is P times Q, is equal to, for P, A minus BQ, and for Q, just Q. Factor that Q through, and you get AQ minus BQ squared. Well, marginal revenue is the change in total revenue over the change in quantity which in calculus speak is the derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity. And in this case, that's A minus 2BQ. You'll notice that the slope is double. Same intercept A, but instead of minus B, it's minus 2B. So there you go. And if you didn't need to know that, oh well, let's move on. Monopoly profit now. Profit is total revenue minus total cost and I showed this before in my perfect competition video, but you might not have watched that. So let's rewrite total revenue minus total cost a couple of ways. Total revenue is P times Q. And here I'm multiplying total cost by one. So it doesn't change its value. It's times Q divided by Q. But I can rearrange this now, PQ minus Q times average total cost. I moved that denominator Q under the total cost basically. And then I can factor out the Q and get Q times P minus ATC. That is the equation for profit that is most helpful on this graph because the average total cost curve is one that we have. The price is something that we have. So let's move forward. The profit maximizing monopolist, they have two choices. They will choose Q and P. Side note, this is the default model where the monopolist only chooses one price that can change uh, with price discrimination or two-part tariffs or other schemes. But this is the default. They choose a single price choosing Q and P. All right, moving on. Step one, or the first choice, to choose the monopoly quantity. Increase production until marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And we've already explained why we do this. It is so that we can capture every transaction where the marginal revenue, this line, is greater than the marginal cost, this line. Remember, marginal revenue is the money coming in per new for the next transaction. Marginal cost is the money going out for the next transaction. As long as the money coming in is greater than the money going out, those are good sales. And so we will increase production all the way up until this quantity. Here's the intersection of marginal revenue and marginal cost. And this is the monopoly quantity. 
at this quantity, we've captured every profitable sale, but we have sold none of the sales where the costs outweigh the revenues. Step two, they're going to choose their price. Now we've got a quantity set, and now we want to choose the best price. Well, in order to do that, let's remember there's a tool on this graph for finding the relationship between quantity and the price people are willing to pay. That's the demand curve. So we're going to take the monopoly quantity and we're going to plug it into the demand curve like so. Blam! I took the quantity and traced it all the way up to the demand curve. And then I find the price associated with that point. So step one, marginal revenue equals marginal cost, captures every good transaction. That's where I find my queue. And then at that queue, I choose the highest price possible. If I charged a higher price, I would have to shift along the curve to the left, and I would not be able to sell QM. If I chose a lower price, I would just be giving up free money because the people are willing to pay it. And so that's really it for the monopolist decision making. They've chosen their quantity, they've chosen their price, and that's where their game ends. But if we want to measure their success and measure how much profit they can make or see how much profit is possible in this market, there's two more steps for us. Step one, we need to figure out their average total cost. And so we're going to plug the monopolist quantity into the average total cost curve. And that happens right there at the green dot. At that green dot, the average total cost is to the left on that axis is marked there. Something I want you to notice when we look at these three, these three dots along here. Once I chose the quantity, I never leave this quantity. Price, average total cost, quantity, they're all in a straight line up and down from each other. That's the price I want to charge at this quantity. That's the cost at this quantity. A different quantity would have a different cost and price. Uh, step four is just to calculate profit. We know that profit is quantity times price minus average total cost. And steps one, two, and three gave us all the information we need. Step one, we solve for quantity. Step two, we solved for price. Step three, we solved for average total cost. And so now we're going to calculate our profit, which is quantity times price minus average total cost, is actually on our graph a rectangle. The base of this rectangle is QM, is the monopoly quantity. The height of this rectangle is the gap between price and average total cost. The rectangle itself is everything between price and average total cost up until the quantity that the monopolist sells. That is profit. So to reiterate, all we did, we substituted in the quantity. We substituted in the price. We substituted in the average total cost. If you ever get lost and aren't sure where to start, come back to this formula for profit. Quantity times price minus average total cost. Do the quantity first, then the price, then the average total cost, and you'll be good to go. In perfect competition with no barriers to entry, you can't keep that profit, but in a monopoly, you can. Uh, I'll have more videos comparing perfect competition and monopoly in a little bit, but I think for today, that's all I got. So thanks for watching, guys. Good luck and happy econing.